I'm Brendan Donnelly and I'm the director of the Federal Trust. I'm recording this on Thursday, the 22nd of July. And already this week, we've had three major incidents which tell us a great deal about the state of British politics at the moment. They're the so-called Freedom Day, the interview between Dominic Cummings and Laura Koonsberg, and the insistence indeed of the British government to renegotiate the Northern Ireland Protocol. A couple of weeks ago, the British government decided on the 19th of July to withdraw, to reverse uh, almost all the legal measures in place to combat COVID. Uh, this was uh, against overwhelming scientific advice. Uh, it was in spite of uh, an increase, a uh, substantial increase and regular increase in all the negative figures about COVID-19. Uh, when they realized how badly the figures were going, uh, the government, to a large extent, backtracked on its original intention, um, saying that people uh, shouldn't uh, immediately abandon the precautions that they've been taking, that um, they, the government, should, could have had their cake and eat it, that they were changing everything and changing nothing. Uh, this led, I'm afraid, to mixed messaging and a lot of confusion in the electorate uh, and uh, 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 among the potential victims uh, of various ages uh, of a third wave of, of COVID. Nevertheless, the government decided to go ahead with what they called their Freedom Day. And the name itself is, is illuminating and ideologically significant. There is a view, an important view within the Conservative Party, um, that any action by government is of its nature uh, restricting and diminishing of the freedom, uh, particularly of those people that the Conservative Party sees it as its duty to protect. In, in some ways, this is a view that goes back to Mrs. Thatcher. When she signed up to the Single European Act, it was under the misapprehension that it was going to lead to the end of all regulation in Europe. She didn't understand until later uh, that what the Single European Act was about a, a framework of common regulation. And this um, resentment of any regulatory structures is uh, an important reason why the Conservative Party so, turns so decisively um, against the European Union. Uh, throughout the course of the pandemic, uh, this, um, as I would see, uh, it's an exaggerated view um, of the malevolence of government uh, has played a, a large role in the Conservative government's reaction um, to the pandemic. Boris Johnson seems himself personally to lean towards this extreme libertarian view. And certainly he knows that the people in the parliamentary party in particular who hold this view uh, can make things very difficult for him unless he attempts to placate them. It's worth recalling that uh, the occasion, the immediate occasion of Matthew Hancock having to resign or being sacked, whatever it was, it varied from day to day, um, was that he forgot where a security camera was. Uh, that was stupid of him, but he gave the opportunity to those people in the Conservative Party who think that he's been much too willing um, to engage in lockdowns over the past six, uh, past year and a half. And uh, uh, that was the reason why he had to go. Uh, I'm quite sure that over the coming months and years, um, if it turns out that further governmental action against COVID is necessary, um, there will be a drag anchor on its being taken in a, in a uh, timely way um, by this group within the Conservative Party. Um, as so often in British recent politics, the British electorate, the British public, uh, are going to be collateral damage, damage collateral victims um, of, um, of dysfunction and civil war within the Conservative Party. I think those people who watched the Dominic Cummings interview on Tuesday, uh, particularly if they watched all of it uh, and noticed the, the extraordinary body language of Cummings himself, uh, will have been appalled that Dominic Cummings until recently was so prominent a, a member um, of, of the British government. Uh, he seems to have spent um, uh, all of 2020 um, in a state of uh, unrelieved contempt for the government that he was advising. At the beginning of 2020, he himself, an unelected official, um, claims to have been conspiring with other colleagues from the Vote Leave campaign uh, to uh, replace um, Johnson. 
He believed um, that uh, Matt Hancock was utterly incompetent in his job and that he was responsible uh, for, for deaths and illness that, that could have been avoided. And yet he continued being the main, main public face, apart from Boris Johnson, uh, of the Conservative Party. It's a, a situation um, which linked with the courtier squabbling between himself and uh, Boris Johnson's fiance um, throws a, a, a very poor light on both Boris Johnson and on Cummings himself. Cummings had interesting things to say about Brexit and uh, his smirking recognition that uh, on the subject of Turkey and on the subject of the budget, he hadn't told the whole truth, which in that context is the recognition that he, he, he told lies in order to um, irritate, as he put it, the, the Remain campaigners, not to inform the electorate, but simply to irritate and provoke um, the Remain campaigners. Um, those admissions um, remind us that Brexit is, is a project founded in, in fantasy and, and mendacity. It's not surprising that it's worked out in such a morally and politically um, incoherent way um, in the, uh, over the past five years. Uh, Cummings um, made the extraordinary claim uh, that uh, a reason why his side of the argument won in 2016 was that they were more respectful uh, of Remainers than Remainers were um, of the Leave campaigners. Um, this doesn't correspond to any reality that um, people will remember from having fought in, in, in that, that campaign. There is a view which says that uh, nothing of um, Cummings' interview should be taken seriously. And obviously he is going to be, an, certainly to a certain extent, a victim of the post-truth politics which um, he himself ha has encouraged. Um, but there are things which he says about um, the, the policy emptiness and the, the political emptiness of Boris Johnson, um, which um, ring a bell, which sound very plausible. Their views, by the way, held by many people in the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party tolerates, on the whole, Boris Johnson, particularly the parliamentarians, because they think he's going to win them elections or they think he can be manipulated, which is essentially the view of the ERG. Um, if they come to um, abandon that view, if they think he isn't going to win elections, he isn't going to be manipulated by them, then opinion against him could turn very rough, very, very precipitously. In his interview, Dominic Cummings talked a bit about Ireland and claimed that both Ireland and the United Kingdom recognised that there was a, a lot of renegotiation to be done um, on the Irish Protocol, the Northern Irish Protocol. Uh, this is um, uh, self-serving self uh, and implausible, and it's certainly not the view of the Irish government. Uh, the proposals for renegotiation the British government have put forward uh, can only be put forward, have been put forward in bad faith, um, particularly as far as the governance structures and getting rid of the role for the European Commission and the European Court of Justice uh, are concerned. These were integral elements of the agreement and um, the, the EU takes a very dim view, understandably dim view, uh, of this attempt to, to rewrite a, uh, a political text, a treaty text, um, which was praised to, to the skies by, by Boris Johnson in, in 2019 and was supposedly the, the oven ready deal. Uh, I don't think that uh, there's a single explanation for why the British government in the person of David Frost is now making such heavy weather of the protocol. Some of it, I think, is just contempt for the European Union, whom they've never been prepared to accept a, as an international actor. Um, some of it is the belief that they can blackmail Ireland. And some of it, and this goes back to what I've been talking about earlier, is the dysfunction of the Conservative Party. Some of it comes from the um, uh, nod and winks, very heavy nods and winks, given to the ERG in 2020. Um, that the Northern Ireland Protocol would never come to be to be implemented um, in one way or another. It would be renegotiated or there'd be a trade agreement um, which made it uh, OTOs and unnecessary. The um, British government um, uh, is now playing with fire in Northern Ireland. Um, it's bringing nearer the possibility of, um, of violence from, from one or other faction of the community. It's lazy and sloppy talk about the lack of democracy in a, a, a treaty text that it itself signed um, is, uh, is, is a provocation. And it's something that uh, other than in the very short term is going to be counterproductive. 
but I think we've got used to the idea that this is a, a government that only thinks in the extreme short term and what it conceives of as being its short term political interests, which it doesn't always get right, but that's a, a, another story. Against this background of, uh, of confusion and division within the Conservative Party, you might ask yourself, why are, uh, are they doing so well in the polls? I think the polls have to be taken with a, a pinch of salt. Both Cheshire and Amersham and um, Batley and Spen uh, suggest that the opinion polls may not be a, a, a good guide at the moment to the movement of, of, of public opinion. But uh, undoubtedly, Boris Johnson has been helped by the quick and effective rollout up till now, up till now, of the vaccines. And he's been helped by the, the cautious and um, uh, workaday at best um, opposition that's come from the major opposition party, the, the Labour Party. Um, but even so, I think that the conclusion to be drawn from this week is, is that uh, underlying this appearance of um, stability, of uh, conservative preeminence, um, there are a lot of unexploded hand grenades, and there may well be more hand grenades to go off um, over the next few weeks and months. Uh, I think that the position of Boris Johnson is much more precarious than it appears uh, at first glance. And I'm quite sure, sadly, um, that the position of the United Kingdom under this Conservative government is going to continue to be very, very precarious uh, for many months and years to come.